Welcome to the Cross TV. I am pleased and honored to welcome a dear friend and spiritual mentor in the studio of the Cross TV today, and we are blessed by his presence here. So welcome, Pastor Frank. Wow. It's great to have you back in the U.S. here with us at the Cross TV. Thank you so much. And I wonder if you can share with those in our audience not familiar with your ministry a bit about both. Wow, thank you so much, um, Sister Tracy. God bless you so much. First of all, I want to thank Jesus for making it possible for me to be here once again, um, to bring the good news and the gospel to the people of God. Um, first of all, my name is Apostle Frank um, Ayer from Ghana, West Africa, married to one wife, of course, and um, I have three kids, two girls, one boy. Hallelujah. Amen. And I have a ministry in Africa, a church which is um, known as Covenant Sealed Grace Chapel. And um, by the grace of God, not just only that, but travel around the world with the itinerary ministry, the outreach ministry, touching lives, reviving churches, and impacting the lives of the individuals and families as well, to the glory of God. Amen. Thank you. So if we can go back just a little bit to the beginning, can you share with us when and how your relationship with Jesus began? Well, if I can remember, um, when you read the book of George, um, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, um, um, before that one, you look at George chapter 2, verse 28, spoke about in the last days how God is going to pour out his spirit unto all flesh. Yes. And when you look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28, um, um, it said something, over there, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, I beg your pardon, if I should read for us. Sure. I want to compare something and to use it to backtrack to explain how I got to know Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, when you read it, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, let me go there for us. Okay. It says something about God pouring out his spirit to you, not just only pouring out his spirit to you, but God showing you spiritual things and God speaking to you. Hallelujah. Now, it says, it says, ten, it says ten, 10 you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember after I heard a very powerful, renowned man of God preached in my country, I was wondering how I can experience and have what is having because I saw God using him to perform great miracles, signs and wonders. People were being healed, people were testified. So I looked at it and I'm like, wow, I love the power. I want to, you know, I, I, how can I get this? Then as he began to preach, he said, you can, you can do what you see me do only if you give your life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, how do I give my life to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Then after everything I heard him begin to call for altar call and people were running and coming to the stage and I also went and gave my life to Jesus. Then from there, few weeks after, I was sleeping and then I had an encounter. For the first time in my life, mm -hmm. I have never ever had such an encounter before and it was an outer body experience. Mm. I saw myself out of my body, mm -hmm. standing by my body, and I was looking at myself. And I was looking at my spirit at the same time. So I was kind of scared because I thought I was dead. And I was wondering, what is the meaning of this? Then for the first time in my life, I saw an angel. Mm -hmm. I encountered. And people of God, um, like we used to watch in the movies and stuff, not all the angels have a wing. There are some that have wings. There are some others that, that doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. So this, gen this gentleman was standing tall. He wouldn't speak to me. He wouldn't talk to me. But as he looked at me, I could hear him speak. So I was wondering and I was saying some things in my mind. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I could hear the voice of my thought sounding like I was actually talking. Then I got to know that mm. anything you think in your mind, in the realms of the spirit, it is a voice. Mm. Then he, he spoke to me and he said, I have things to show you. And he specifically spoke to me and he said, I have 20 years of your life and ministry ahead of time to show you. And that was how for the first time I encountered God in such a dimension. And he taught me things about the realms of the spirit. Then I knew 
that truly God heard my cry when I went to the altar to give my life to him. Mm. So at that time, you were called to ministry. And um, yes, to still be on that about my call to ministry, that is what made me to be convinced because I didn't want nobody to call me to say, oh, you are lazy, you don't want to work. I didn't want anybody to say, oh, look at him. He, he, he thinks um, there is money in becoming a pastor. So I really wanted to work until after that encounter, mm-hmm. prophets, um, I mean, in, in Africa will meet me, will see me, I'll go to the meetings and they say, you, the hand of God is on you, God, I've got into full-time ministry. And I was wondering, how can I be a full-time minister if I'm not working physically? You know? Yes. And they just left it to be that way. I began to seek the face of God and God proved himself to me. Mm. And one of the ways the Lord proved himself to me, I lay hands on the sick, they get healed instantly. Wow. If I can recall, there was a friend around that time um, who had an issue with his jaw. Mm. It was swollen up, and the other side was also swollen up. Then he was a very good friend of mine, still a good friend of mine, in ministry as well. Mm-hmm. And um, by that time, he was in the ministry, but like a lay preacher. Mm-hmm. You know, we were all being brought up in the ministry. We were all serving and stuff. And he invited me over to his house, and I laid my two hands on the cheeks it was amazing the following day he went to bed that night the following he woke up everything shrank back to normal supernaturally oh wow everything shrank amazing. back his skin became normal the jaws became normal everything got into place he didn't have to go back to the hospital mm-hmm. to spend money on surgery anymore wow. then i'm like wow i love it Amen. then it occurred to me that i said to god and to myself that i wish i could have what this man have then the man said, if you can give your life to Jesus, and pam, I knew God has confirmed to me Amen. that he has called me. Amen. Amen. So with your deep calling, Pastor Frank, as it relates to the fivefold ministries, what should we uh, consider you as apostle? Um, by the grace of God, I operate in the office, which is mm-hmm. my dominant office as mm-hmm. an apostle. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you kind of... Um, here people started very well. They kind of would be like, oh, I'm an evangelist. I'm a pastor. Then along the line, they are like, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. Everybody's mm-hmm. a prophet now. But um, when I look at this dispensation and what God is doing, if you are not able to define your office, you will cause a lot of havoc in the body of Christ. So when I look at what God is using me to do, and by confirmation through visions and encounters and, and prophets, mm-hmm. true men of God, genuine men of God, as an apostle, I could see the evidence of it in my ministry, which is um, signs, wonders, miracles, with a prophetic mandate. Sometimes I go to meetings and I see people's names. Yes. Prophecy to people by their, by their situation. Yes. Sometimes um, the Lord will let me know people's date of birth. Mm-hmm. I mentioned people dead of bed and stuff, so I know that, oh, so being an apostle, there's a prophetic mandate in addition. So I'm an apostle mm-hmm. with a prophetic mandate by the grace of God Amen. to the glory of God. So what are the, some of the challenges you're facing right now in your ministry? So right now, I'm looking at um, how things are going now. As the Bible spoke about in a book of um, Timothy, mm-hmm. that in the last days, people, men shall be lovers of, of themselves. Um, now, people think that the way the prophet, that in these last days, the first prophet, um, with all due respect, the first apostles, the first doctrine. So, um, it looks like people have been wounded. Yes. It looks like people are offended. Mm-hmm. It looks like people have been misled. True. It looks like people have had the wrong encounters mm-hmm. with the wrong people, thinking that, um, this is it. So um, the major challenge now is like a lot of people have laid back. They don't want to involve themselves again with the men of God, mm. with the things of God, just, um, just because of the encounter they had that wasn't okay. Mm. And looking at this dispensation again, people don't want to hear about Jesus. Mm. People don't want to support the things of God financially because not everybody's called to preach. God gives some the gift, the gift, uh, when we look at um, the Bible, the, some of the gift the Lord gives to some people is the gift of help. Yes. To True. administer help, yes. to give help. Mm. So there are categories of people that God have put in a position to have the substances to push 
the gospel to Amen. push the word of God or the work of God. Mm -hmm. When you read the book of um, Acts chapter 2, there was a Pentecostal day, a, Pen a Pentecostal experience, a revival broke out. When you read again to the chapter 4, verse 31 to 35, the Bible said, and at the place where they prayed, it was shaken. And the Bible said, and God confirmed their works with signs and wonders. Watch this. Not just only that, the first revival took place, there was another revival in a book of Acts chapter 4, after the chapter 2. Now watch this. The Bible said, as they prayed and the place was shaking, mm -hmm. as they prayed and then God confirmed their works with signs and wonders, those that owned properties, they went out, sold their properties, and brought the proceed to under the feet, placed it under the feet of the apostle. And the Bible said, and when it was shared among them, they that had need, they, their needs were supplied, it was met. And the Bible said there was none among them that ever lacked. People of God, we are in a dispensation that God needs men and women who will be able to avail themselves that he can use them to use their, sub, um, their substances, their finances, their energy, their time to support, to push the gospel of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So what advice or message do you have for the body of Christ in the, these end times? These end times, we need revival. These end times, we need um, the power of God more than ever before. When you look at the time of people like the apostles, mm -hmm. um, when Jesus left, all they knew they had was the Holy Spirit. Yes. And they developed relationship with the Holy Spirit. And the more they had power. In the book of um, 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 John 1, 12, it says, as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even yes. to them that believe on his name. So in this dispensation, you need to develop personal relationship with Jesus. You need to believe in Jesus. You need to trust in Jesus. You need to love Jesus. You need to connect yourself to Jesus. Mm. And in case you're not born again, this is the right time for you to become born again. Listen to me. It doesn't matter the crowd you, are, you might be having in your church. It doesn't have, uh, matter... The houses you have, it doesn't matter the job, the pay that you get. It doesn't matter the people you are connected to. If you don't know Jesus, you are lost. You are missing. You are vulnerable to anything the enemy will do in these last days against humanity. But I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus that the hand of God come upon you, preserve you, preserve your family, preserve your loved ones in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is a powerful and far-reaching Christian media platform, and yep. we come into the homes of millions of people around the world. What is your take on generally uh, media and spreading the gospel? Now, when we talk about um, the media, my viewpoint on the media from the um, perspective of, um, of the scripture, when we read the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, um, the Bible spoke about um, the devil being the prince of the air. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about the media, the media deals with the airwaves. And so I believe that if we Christians will come together, we love each other, we agree with, with each other to, I mean, um, push the men and the women of God out there mm -hmm. to empower them to take over the media with the gospel, believe you me, the devil will run out of job. Mm -hmm. What you use the media to do will depend what you get out of it. The impact um, 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 that is taking place now um, in this world, majority of it out of 100%, 99.9% is through the media. Hallelujah. Sometimes what we preach in a church doesn't cut across nations and doesn't go far without the media. So right. with the media, you'll be in California, but you know what is going on in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. With the media, you can be in your room, in your bedroom, and the whole world knows about you. Look right. at, for example, TikTok. Mm -hmm. Look at um, Twitter. Yep. Look at Instagram. People that we don't know all of a sudden have become stars, mm -hmm. not being part of Hollywood. Right. But from their bedroom on TikTok, they have become stars. Mm -hmm. And so you could see that all these things is rising very fast. On a negative aspect. What about the gospel of Jesus? Through the media. There are people holding back. And churches are dying. And souls, right. are, and souls are dying. Because yeah. 
they feel like, well, um, I can pray in my room and I'll be fine. No. Mm -hmm. No. It came to die for all men. But how can lives be impacted when they, we are not pushing our own? Mm. But rather criticizing That's and fighting true. our own. And the devil is using his children mm. to take over the social media, the yes. television, to, to push negative stuff. Look at, the, look at our children. Look at the, the youth. Look at the young adult. Mm -hmm. Through the media, people are hooked up to pornography. Mm. Through the media, people are watching the wrong movies. And people of God, what you give your attention to has the power to capture your vision. And once it can capture your vision, it can affect or control your destination in life. Once it can control your destination in life, it can thwart, it can destroy, it can have a negative effect on your destiny. But I pray for somebody watching me, and I pray for people all over the world that may the power of God hit our homes and our lives. May the power of God touch us, touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our souls, touch our spirit, and lose us from the grief and the wrong doctrines of the enemy that is making us um, um, think and feel that it is not necessary to push the gospel, to go on the, on the mm. TV, to, to, to be on the social media, to use the gospel through the social media, to preach the gospel to save lives. The gospel, salvation is for free, but the gospel is not for free. Amen. Salvation is for free, but the gospel is not for free. How mm -hmm. can we win the souls in countries if there is nobody coming, putting things together to get things done, to pay for the stadium, to pay for the halls, to buy a camera? Hallelujah. And so this is what we need to understand. We are in the last days, mm -hmm. and there is no time anymore. We are left with extra time mm -hmm. through the grace of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So you've been in the U.S. on a few occasions. What is the divine purpose for your U.S. outreach? By the grace of God, I have some few things here. Um, what my visitation to the U.S. and not just the U.S. but all over the world, including mm -hmm. Africa, is number one is to reveal Jesus to transform lives. How can you transform lives if you are not giving Jesus to the people? Yes. To reveal Jesus and to transform lives. Number two to bring revival not just to America, but to all over the world. Not just to America, but to all over the world. Number three, soul winning. To win the lost, to win souls, to make sure that people that are lost in the spirit and in the physical get back together to themselves and be presented to Jesus. We have to, we have to win them and present them to Jesus. Hallelujah. And number four, to raise leaders and warriors for Jesus by means of impacting their lives through programs and revival meetings here and there and the churches all over the world. Hallelujah. And also, number, number six, to empower people through the word and prayer. I'm a man of prayer, of course. I love prayer and I love the word of God. To raise leaders and warriors for Jesus, to empower people through the word and prayer. And last, to raise a people of integrity accountability, excellence, and with human dignity. Hallelujah. That is one of the things. Um, why God sent me here mm. and he sent me to places as well. And of course, I'm open to all churches that would love to invite me, um, that are trusting God for revivals in their churches, mm. in their cell group meetings, in their families or individually. We are here. God brought us here for you, not for myself. He yeah. called us because of you. So if you have a ministry, if you have a church, you want to throw an invite, we are here for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So um, we have about maybe five minutes or so. Yep. Um, was there anything else you want to uh, speak from your heart to the Cross TV yeah. viewers? The Lord gave me a message for my lovely viewers. Hallelujah. Now, let me share with you. Um, we need revival. Yes. Okay. Now, what is revival? Revival is an empowerment irrespective of the condition that we are in. That when it comes to you by the Spirit of God, you subdue, you control that situation. Mm -hmm. That is revival. Now, revival is an instance of something 
becoming popular, active, or important once again. People of God, if your business, if your finances, if your life, if your ministry will have to be active, when I talk about active, to be activated, to function. And don't forget, I want to make this profound statement. Don't forget that you are available does not mean you are valuable. Mm -hmm. That you are available does not mean you are valuable. So you see, some people, some ministries have been available for a long time, but people don't see their value. You have been at that workplace for a long time, but people don't see your value. You have been in a family for a long time, but people don't see your value. You have been trying to advertise what God placed in you, your gift, your skills, your abilities, but people don't see your value. You need revival yes. by the power of God. When revival hits you, you become very valuable. You become very, very valuable. So people that... Um, people don't place value on, mm -hmm. they don't get back in. And when, it, when you lack yeah. back in, you become vulnerable instead of valuable. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, number one, it takes people who seek the face of God to experience, experience revival. Amen. You see nice ministries, you see churches, you see um, um, people all over, and they, have, they, they, they look as if they've got it all together. Nice systems in the place, but because of lack of power and revival, mm. nothing is happening. No mm. change is occurring. Mm -hmm. And how can that be possible mm -hmm. until we seek and yearn and desire for revival, yes. we can have one. Amen. God is calling us to himself. He said, in the last days when I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. This is the time. Yes. This is the day. That we need to cry to God for revival. If Listen to me. If we can cry to God for revival as a church, as a body of Christ, coronavirus will not be a news, will not make headlines on, the, on our TV stations again. Never. Revival. Revival. Another thing about revival is that revival makes us live in heaven on earth. Mm. Revival makes us live in heaven on earth. Our Father which has in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that is one of the desire of God for humanity and for the church. How can that be possible when we are fighting among each other? How can that be possible when we don't have a personal relationship with Jesus? How can that be possible when we are critical of each other? How can that be possible when we are not pushing and supporting the gospel? How can that be possible when we are having bitterness and grudges in us? How can that be possible when we are backbiting? How can that be possible when we backslide? How can that be possible? We need to come back to Jesus. We need to come back to each other mm. and empower each other. The Bible said, um, iron sharpened iron in the book of Proverbs. The Bible said, deep colored unto deep. How can that be possible? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, number four, revival causes fireworks on earth. It causes fireworks. Listen to me. The church in the book of Acts chapter 2 was born out of the Spirit of God by fire. Amen. Bible said, and there was that which sat on them um, as of clothing tongues of fire. Mm -hmm. After the mighty rushing wind that took over the place, then the fire came. The wind represents the breath of God. Mm -hmm. The wind represents the release of the Spirit of God, and the fire represents the anointing of God. Amen. Yep. Hallelujah. And the last one, it brings order in life. Revival. Amen. Brings order in life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If someone in our audience has uh, been touched by your ministry, um, how can they uh, help your work? And what is the easiest way to do that? Um, one of the ways you can reach um, me if you are blessed by this ministry or by these few words, um, I have a local contact here which you can reach um, this person and um, you can do cash up or PayPal as well. 
anything you want to do. If you are blessed by the ministry, you want to reach out to us. And um, I want to give the numbers out there. I want to put it out there so you can write it down. You can put it down. The numbers, which is 6263751184. And then also, um, you can reach through this email that will come straight to us, which is OF in small letters. O F O R I F R A N C nine one five at gmail dot com. I want to repeat that again. O F O R I F R A N C nine one five at gmail dot com and we'll get back to you. Hallelujah. God Thank you, Pastor you. Frank, for joining us today on The Cross TV. And we'll Thank you. catch you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's an honor. God bless you all. Thank you. Um